tonight on Let It Rip. Tudor Dixon. Tudor, thank you, Tudor. Thank you. I heard you're doing well. She got a shout out at the Trump rally. Now the West Michigan Republican is ready to let it rip. What Tudor Dixon has to say about the police killing in Grand Rapids, how she would have handled the pandemic, and why she thinks your tax dollars should go to both public and private schools. Time now to let it rip. Charlie Lanton joins me as we continue our in-depth coverage of the governor's race tonight. We welcome another Republican candidate, West Michigan's own Tudor Dixon, who's both a former steel executive and cable news broadcaster. And we're going to begin with news of the day because really this is uh, making headlines across the country. Uh, as a candidate running for governor, uh, when it comes to the Grand Rapids police releasing that video showing an officer shoot an unarmed black man, 26-year-old Patrick Leoya, you say you're unequivocally behind the police in this case. Why? I, I would argue that he wasn't unarmed. He had taken the police officer's taser. For a minute, the police officer asked him to drop the taser, demanded he drop the taser. He refused to do that. He's struggling. That police officer was at the point where he knew his life was in danger. Why, why, why not wait for the investigation to continue? Why just jump in a day after the video comes out? Why do we continually glorify criminals and criminalize police? Why are we saying that the police officer was wrong right off the bat? This is a new thing that has happened in the past few years where we criminalize our police. We struggle to get police into our police officers, into our departments today. And police don't want to be in these police departments because of this very thing. Because when there's an incident like this, the police officer is immediately criminalized. But we're talking about the use of deadly force. And even in the manual for Grand Rapids Police, as well as Michigan, State Police, the Detroit Police, they say the use of deadly force only if a person is fleeing who allegedly committed a violent felony. This was a bad li a license plate. He is in a situation where this man is has his taser. He's in a situation where his life is at risk and he doesn't know what, who else in the community is at risk. If that officer is tased and he grabs his gun, what is the next step there? How much danger is the community in? You let him go. You let him go. It's a bad license plate. The car was there. He had a passenger. Let him go. I guess the point, though, is, is that this is deadly force. And I understand it's controversial. But I, I, do you think, though, as governor, that policies need to be changed or maybe reinforced because people are not being police officers anymore. This probably is not going to help. I think it's not going to help that the media immediately comes out and criminalizes the police officer in this case. That's the problem that we face, and we face it across the country, that our police are under attack. I've talked to many of our retired police officers, and they say, I left the force because this is the exact reason you could easily lose your life and go behind bars or get killed and nobody's gonna come to the defense of the police officer. If it had gone the other way and the police officer were the one who were dead today, would we be talking about it? Tudor, let me ask you this, uh, for the family of Leoya and anybody who's watching right now whose son or daughter has been involved with a police altercation, mistakes are made, but should he have paid with his life? He, what ha needed to happen is that he needed to obey what the police officer was said. If we don't have law and order in this country, what do we have? That is the basic right of people to have law and order. So you you adhere to what police officers say. I back the police officers, what can always. You, what can you as governor do to get more people, good qualified people, to join the police and retain them and stay as a police officer. We have to put, we have to seriously fund the police. We have to defend our police officers. We have to support our police officers and we have to train our police officers. When you take a look at Governor Gretchen Whitmer and what she did in the last two years, obviously she's come under wide criticism, even from some Democrats who say some of her rules were draconian and some of her, uh, she was simply too strict. I know you've had a lot of criticism wielded her way. What would you have done differently right away? Look, we know that when you look at nursing homes, she received a letter right off the bat saying, whatever you do, do not put COVID positive pati patients into nursing homes, but she did that. We know that she was also, when it come, came to unemployment, told by the federal government, you have too many people on your unemployment rolls. You have to clear that off, get these people off. We have an $8.5 billion mistake in unemployment. There were multiple things. Look what she did with restaurants and lodging. She shut them down and continued to leave them shut down and then went back after them again. Many people consider this governor vindictive. Well, she went after small business owners. She went after America's barber, Carl Mankey. She went after Marlena Hackney. All of these things were unnecessary. These were misdemeanors, and she went after them. As it was a novel virus, and at the time, we knew what we knew. President Donald Trump 
obviously came under a lot of criticism for his initial handling of this pandemic. Isn't it this just because it was COVID? This is a pandemic that no one had seen before. His initial handling, you said his initial handling. Yeah, people made a choice in the first 15 days and then we saw states opening up and she saw these states opening up too. She saw Florida, they were fine. She saw Texas, she saw Georgia. Look at South Dakota where Governor Kristi Noem said, we trusted the people of the state. She didn't trust anyone. That was, I think, the biggest mistake Gretchen Whitmer made was to not trust the people that had businesses. People with businesses come up with safety plans all the time. Their ultimate goal is to keep their employees and their customers safe, and they know how to do it. She could have trusted so as the governor, well. You, as governor, you would take a back road then and let the business decide how to handle a pandemic? Absolutely, especially when you look at the Restaurant and Lodging Association, they submitted their plan. This is our safety plan, and they got a letter back saying received from the governor's office, and they were, they were kept shut down. Do you think the governor was treated more harshly because she's a woman? No. Why? I think she was treated harshly because her rules hurt people's livelihoods and hurt families and hurt students. And then she didn't try to help students. When you look at the students that now we see more than 50% of our third graders this year failed their literacy exam, and she was given an opportunity for $1,000 reading scholarships and she vetoed it. So no, I don't think it has anything to do with her gender. I think it absolutely has to do with the fact that her policies failed the people of Michigan. One of your opponents today came out and said basically that the trial in Grand Rapids, the federal trial, that there was an acquittal, of course, and there were hung jury on a couple, but that the governor may have faked uh, a kidnapping plot to further her 2020 chances in the election. It's, it's, it's Garrett Sedano said that. Do you agree with that? No, I don't agree with that. I think that the trial has been very interesting. There's obviously an interesting factor of what how much of a role did the FBI play in the in what happened with Gretchen Whitmer? And did she ever think she was in danger? It seems as though she did not. The jury got it right. Yeah, I, I am looking at what the jury is saying and saying this is this is very interesting. We should look further at what the FBI. Do you think it's wrong to go was. forward because there's more prosecutions? If you were again, it's the governor's not you necessarily can't do that, but would you try more people again on this on these facts as you know them? Uh, I would have to take a look at it. Well, when you take a look at where we're at right now in the state of Michigan, if you look at the great divide between Republicans and Democrats, the seeds of that divide are sowed right here in Michigan. There are extremists on both sides. You know that. I know that. What would you do as governor to bring people together and also to serve Democrats in the state? The goal here is to make sure that we have a state that is friendly for families. So Michigan used to be in the top 10 for education. Now we're 38th in the nation. Education is very important for everything in the state. The foundation of the state is based in education. So if we can improve our education, then we can improve our workforce and we can bring more businesses here. We have got to start having people come to the state of Michigan. We, we look at the southern states right now. They're drawing in families. We need to be family friendly. We need to be bringing livelihoods back to people and making sure that our economy is thriving. We can bring policies to the state that will do that. We can cut the overregulation. We can allow choice in schools. We can allow parents inside of schools and let them know what's going on. What about the parental rights legislation in Florida that the governor there talked about? Chief Craig, who's running for your jo the job you want as well, sat in that seat last week and said, I not only support that legislation, I would extend it to the sixth grade so that sex education and talk about gays and LGBTQ issues are not taught until the sixth grade. Well, would the, you, would the, you take it that far? The bill talks about talking about sexuality and gender with students. And absolutely, it's not the school's place to talk to my children about gender and sexuality. In fact, in, Mich in the state of Michigan, we should be focused on reading. I go back to, again, 50% of our third graders failed their literacy exam this year. That needs to be our focus because from kindergarten to third grade, you're learning to read. From third grade on, you're reading to learn. If you miss that crucial step, we are robbing you of 12 years of education. We in our schools have got to start focusing on what these kids need to have a successful Should life. Should Detroit schools get more money or more finances because they have a lower rate of success in school? If we just look at the numbers there, should Detroit be treated differently? I think that we need to make sure that we are allowing parents to decide what the, the best school is for their child, and that will help all of our schools improve. Would you and I would more like funding? to see I would like to see the funding go to the teachers who are doing the best job. I would like to see teachers. We have so many young teachers. Is there a teachers. criteria for that? It's very subjective, isn't it? There is a criteria. We test teachers all the time. We're I mean, we I just, we just talked about the literacy exam. So if we're seeing students that are get, having high 
marks on those literacy exams. What is that teacher doing differently and why should that teacher not be rewarded? We should be rewarding teachers. Would you take per pupil funding and give it to parents to send the kids to private schools? I would, yeah. That would potentially gut many public schools. Why do you think that? Because a lot of people may opt out. You never, there'd, be a, there'd be a war. Have you seen that in other states? Because that's not what it shows. Other states would show quite the opposite, that your public schools will thrive. In fact, I would like to see thriving public schools and thriving public, uh, private schools. I would love to see parents be able to choose the best place for their child because they're the one that knows their child best. And maybe that's not a private school. Maybe that's a different public school, but every child learns differently. Tutor, reading, writing, arithmetic, now Let's go to the arithmetic of an election. The 15,000 signatures that you need in order to get on the ballot. Are you close and are you scared or afraid that you won't get those? Oh no, we're good, we'll have them. But 3% right now is what the last poll showed. James Craig had 31%, does that concern you? Not at all, we well, have a plan, we have a plan, we are sticking to our plan. And even if you look back at, I'll pick on Ron DeSantis for example, when you look back at his election, even in June, he was about 20 points below his his competitor. We are exactly where we want to be. What about the Trump factor? You took a picture with him and the president of the Michigan Police Officers Association as you're running against a former police chief. Should we read into that? Or is there an endorsement coming? You read into whatever you want with that, but I have spoken with the president several times, and I believe that he understands the policies that we want. We've talked about the things that we've talked about here today, the importance of education, the importance of taking care of parents, making sure parents are in schools, and the importance of manufacturing. If you listen to Donald Trump, he's talked about manufacturing in the Midwest. That's my background. Do you need Trump to win? If Trump gets into the election, that person wins. So if, if the president is going to weigh in, please weigh in for me. <laughs> Charlie Langton will be coming back on the other side of this break in order to talk about everything we heard Tudor Dixon talk about. I want to thank you for your time today. Thank you so much for joining us here on Let It Rip. Thank you. And coming up, you've heard from the cabinet candidate. Up next, our panel joins us to talk more about the race for governor. Welcome back to Let It Rip on the panel tonight. Former state rep and current Detroit Public School Board member Sherry Gay Dagnogo. And we should also mention Sherry is running for Congress in the 13th District as a Democrat. Next to her, conservative attorney Terry Johnson. Then there's Mark Lee, president of the Lee Group and contributor to Cranes Detroit. And we have educator turned lawmaker, state rep Pamela Hornberger, a Republican who represents several places in Macomb County, including Chesterfield Township. And of course, we all know the hardest working man in television and radio. Charlie Langton, anchor, attorney, and reporter. And we thank you all for joining us tonight on Let It Rip. It's good to see all of you outside of a Zoom call, which is wonderful. Yes. I want to begin with you. Uh, Sherry, talk a little bit, if you would, for a moment about your initial reaction to what you saw coming out of Grand Rapids and that police take. It, disheartening, um, certainly um, as, as a former legislator, but more than that, a mom. A mom that has a son, one son who's 28 years old, just the thought of him being pulled over uh, for a registration problem, albeit right after we're coming out of COVID, uh, where things like that were, was relaxed. Uh, and to now lose his life, was it worth it? Um, I, I was clenching for my chest, hoping, <clears throat> hoping that after that little scuffle, uh, that this officer wouldn't in fact kill him. And, and my heart just laments. Uh, Patrick's life is lost senselessly, senselessly um, at the hand of an officer that lacks the necessary sensitivity. What's your reaction to Tudor Dixon saying that she's unequivocally behind the officer? Well, you know, that just shows that she lacks the necessary empathy uh, to be the leader of this state. It's clear uh, because any mother, any mother that would see a 26 year old man face down with his face in the grass to be shot in the head by an officer because he was pulled over for registration and he did not have a weapon. That's not th the use of deadly force at that point. That, that should be questioned by any mother, by any party. Terry, you're an attorney. Defend the police officer. What's his best argument? Well, uh, quite honestly, it, it wasn't he was just pulled over for a registration. If you go back and you look at the tape, first thing is he got out of the car, right? Let's talk about the conduct of the young man, okay? Should he have lost his life? No, I'm not saying that was justified. But you can't sit here and say, you know, everyone's making it sound like he pulled him over, he shot him, and he, and he took off. That's not true. 
this young man, unfortunately, we want to teach our kids something, teach them to respect the law. Let's start with that. Teach them to follow the orders of a police officer. You're not going to win out there. Where do you win, Charlie? In court. That's where this has to go. And these things are going to continue to happen as long as people are out here saying the wrong things. He was just pulled over for this. His behavior, unfortunately, led him down to the road. What, what behavior? His, what behavior? I don't know. Taking so an so officer's all, taser? First, so first of all, you, you think have that's to okay? You have to understand. You know there's a law you have, against you have that. to understand something. First of all, we have to address police accountability in this instance. But more than that, what about the his fear, accountability? The fear that these young men have then stay after in the, car. See, the fear that these young men have after they have seen countless lives of it's African count Americans, no. countless Sherry, lives that of lie Afri out there. that Mark, lie? Mark, Sherry, are you kill Sh kidding Sherry, me? Sherry, what about his actions? Are, are you going he, to you and, and, mother, and his you right, your mother don't raise that? your voice at me. I'm in sorry. In his man. right thinking, in his right thinking, fear being absent that was not the right decision. But in this, so instance, he has in this instance, in this instance, you have a number of young men who are fearful of their lives because even when they have sat in the car, even when they have held their, their hands at nine o'clock, 12 o'clock and three o'clock, their lives have still been taken. So, so get that, out the, 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 the police could have de-escalated this situation there's and his life could have not been that, taken. It, depending on who you talk to, there's responsibility on the person who's being pulled over and the officer who's pulled yes. over. Yes. And the question here is who went too far and when. I want to ask Rep State Rep Hornberger your thoughts when you first saw this. As you look at this as a parent, what are your thoughts about that young man? Well, I'm going to agree because I think we have to teach our children how to respond when they are pulled over, and I did that with my daughter, that you stay in the car and you're respectful and that you do keep your hands on the steering wheel until you ask the police officer if you can get your registration out of your purse or your wallet or wherever so that they're not afraid because there is a sense of fear. An officer always has a sense of fear when they're walking up to a car into an unknown situation, and so does the person sitting there. But he made right? a mistake, and he paid with his life. Where, where's the responsibility of the officer in terms of the judgment that was made? I Did think you see at the that? point that they were laying on the ground together and he had the officer's taser, I, I, what, what do you what do you expect you the officer him, to you do? You shoot him in the back of the head, right? Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that. that. Saying? He didn't. He didn't have the officer's gun. He had the officer's taser, and and Which I agree. And, 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 I, and I agree. We have to train the, both. The, the, yeah, and there was another person right. in the vehicle that was then standing there with the camera. That officer doesn't know what that person has. He's in an unknown situation by himself with two people that were that are outside now outside of the vehicle. Mark, I want to ask you, I mean, there's obviously a crisis when it comes to policing, uh, and it's something that we've seen over the years, and on both sides of the equation here, you have people who don't want to become police officers because they see this unfold. And whether or not he followed every rule in the Grand Rapids Code of Conduct book, he's still going to be thought of as someone who killed a young man. As a father yourself, what are your thoughts on this? My, <clears throat> my thoughts are very simple. First of all, my thoughts and prayers with the family of the young man. First of all, let's start, start right there. But as a dad, I'm concerned for my kids. I'm concerned for young African-American kids. Because young African-American kids live in fear when they see a, a police car pull up behind them. I've had police cars pull up behind me, and I was nervous. I was upset. I was concerned. So I think the challenge here is that uh, as, a, as a father, I am concerned for for my two young kids, who are now adults, of course. Uh, and I think that as a, as a parent, we need to educate them on the things that they can and cannot do. We need to make them hypersensitive as if, if, they're, if they're being approached by a police uh, vehicle or officer. Uh, we have to make them aware of some of the things they can and cannot do, quite frankly. Is this something that should be taught in schools, how to handle a police officer, a traffic stop? I mean, is that what we've come to? But this, but I think so. I think oh, so. Charlie, yeah. I think yes. so. It's kind of sad. Let's Tra talk about what else should or yes. shouldn't be taught inside of the schools. We know what's unfolding in Florida right now with uh, that law that talks about not teaching about sexuality and gender and all of the things that they're talking about. Uh, what are your thoughts, Sherry, about whether or not that should be taught at an early age? You heard Tudor Dixon say, hold on, they need to learn reading, writing, and arithmetic, not about uh, sexuality at that age. So, so I think in, in this current modern day, we have to look at making sure that we do everything that is necessary to keep children safe. I think parents have a right to weigh in on what they want their children to learn, but there are a number of instances in where our students need to be taught um, even how to protect their bodies, when to speak up when something is happening to them. And so, yes, I think sex education um, is a part of what should be taught um, in our schools. In elementary school? 
it depends on what grade level. And I would say at least fifth grade, getting to sixth grade, that's our middle school age. Um, but I think parents have a right um, to weigh in on what their children are exposed to in the K through five school. You agree with Chief Craig, who actually said, wait until at least the sixth grade before yes. we start talking about this. State Rep, what do you think about that? Is it too early and is does the governor of Florida have it right? And does Tudor Dixon have it right when yeah, she says? I, I think he does do have it right. And I, I, I think we do have to have parents that are allowed to weigh in. Um, if there's something being taught in the school as far as sex ed or a any of those topics that parents need to be aware of it before it's taught and they need to have a chance to have that discussion with their kids and, and decide whether or not they're going to opt in or opt out. Mark Lee, does anyone have a chance against Governor Gretchen Whitmer in the field of Republicans right now? And if so, who is that person? I, I can't predict the future is too early out. I think that Governor Whitmer is, is still in a good position, generally speaking. Uh, I paid attention to a lot of the Republican candidates. Uh, interesting, let, let it play itself out. I'm not going to uh, single out any one individual because uh, I think we still have several debates, several meetings, several conversations to go. But one thing I will encourage people to do is they need to educate themselves, make themselves aware of all of the candidates, and make sure they identify or select someone that they feel best suitable for their needs. You heard Tudor Dixon talk about how businesses yeah. were the victim of Governor Gretchen Whitmer. You're a business expert and a businessman yourself. Did she do a wonderful job handling the pandemic? I support what Governor, Governor Whitmer did when it came to the uh, pandemic, particularly from a business standpoint. You mentioned earlier in the conversation, it was a novel virus. We had never been there before. I have people I know personally who have passed. And, and I know people became very sick because of the virus. So early on, since this is a novel virus, I think she did an excellent job trying to provide direction. She tried to follow the science. She tried to follow the data. But tried, but did she cripple business in the process? I think, I think across the country, a lot of small businesses were crippled. 75% of small businesses had their revenues impacted. We know that businesses shut down. But I will also argue and suggest that if she did nothing, many more people would have been sick, maybe would have passed, a lot more businesses would have gone out of business. Is this going to be an election issue, this pandemic? Or is she going to, uh, if, if you believe that she didn't do the right thing, is this what the voters are really going to latch on to? In other words, if you're Republicans, are you? is this the issue you really want to go and, and campaign on? The pandemic? The pandemic's it's, over right now. Well, the pandemic. It's a losing it, it, argument for it, Republicans, it, it's, isn't it's it? It's not over because, again, look at how many businesses you still have yep. to go into and you're required to wear a mask. Not the, many. The, not well, many. And listen, the, 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 the FAA just extended the mask uh, mandate on planes, okay? For two weeks, yes. A couple weeks. Right, right. but still, but here's here's the bigger part of this. She has a record to run on, yep. right? And that record is not good. If you're a business owner, it, it, here's the bigger part to me. Look at all the things she put in place, but she allowed her family and herself to ignore. Don't go to Florida. Where was she in Florida? Sherry, Don't did you mind that out? When, when you saw did. when her you saw that did. unfold with the trips to Florida, did you did you take issue with that yourself? No, I think people had to make decisions that um, are based on their level of comfortability, uh, and so no, I didn't take issue with it. And I think the people that will vote for governor uh, this year will be looking more towards issues that take us forward, uh, people that are able to get things done, uh, looking at moving. Our economy forward, uh, making sure that our schools are put in a place where we can get equitable funding throughout all of our districts, addressing our infrastructure problems. But had it been a Republican, Sherry, who took a flight to go see her ailing father in Florida instead of a Democrat, would you be saying the same thing? Well, you know what? We saw that in Washington. We saw Cruz who went out the country when, when you know, you had the national disaster there in Texas, but he was still there beating down our new justice uh, uh, member that has joined our, our Supreme Court. Uh, so, so people can get past all of that. What we're focused on right now is how to move Michigan forward. The governor has done a very good job doing that, and I'm, I'm excited about voting we, for we have, we have want to give everyone a final thought. Sure. In order to do that, we have to take a break. When we come back, we'll be checking in with our panel to see what else they think. We'll be right back. Time for final thoughts. Let's start with Mark Lee. Educate yourself on the issues at hand. Make sure that you're fully aware and engaged in the entire process. Okay. Real simple. If you're happy with what's happened with COVID and the way the governor's run it, vote for her. If you're not, like the rest of America and the rest of the state, vote for an alternative. Jerry? Today marks the second year anniversary of me losing my sister Jelena to COVID. I'm ready to move Michigan forward in her memory. Let's do it. 
I think we're going to see a lot of the business owners that are still, still struggling and a lot of parents across the state that are really upset about their children and the impact of their learning loss that are going to come out and um, support a Republican candidate. I think the governor's in trouble on those issues. Charlie? Let's see what happens in Grand Rapids. There's a, a very serious issue going on over there with uh, police issues, and I think we'll have to let it all play out. Well, we did uh, th just that here, and of course, decency is a prerequisite to everything we do, and we hope that everybody on either side of the political aisle play that game the right way. That does it for this edition of Let It Rip. Have a good night, everybody.